Number 22. A mother pushes her child on a swing so that his speed is 9 meters per second at the lowest point of his path. The swing is suspended 2 meters above the child's center of mass. Letter A. What is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration of the child at the low point? All right, so here we have a picture. Right here is the swing path, and it has a certain radius, right, of curvature of two times, of, of not two times anything, just two meters. And it tells us that the velocity at the low point is nine meters per second. And again, that velocity would be then equal to the um, linear velocity, right? Because right at its low point, there is no y displacement or y movement at all. So the velocity here at this particular location is purely x, okay? Which means that it is the linear velocity, aka tangential. Now, we have to find centripetal acceleration. So what formula we're gonna use? Looks like this one will come in handy, right? I mean, this is really very straightforward. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the linear velocity squared divided by the radius. So just plug it in. This is, man, I wish all physics problems were like this, right? 2.00. So we get now, this is simply going to be, so 9 squared over, over 2, and we get 40.5, right? So we get a value of 40, 40.5 meters per second squared. And that takes care of letter A. Now, moving on to letter B. What is the magnitude of the force the child exerts on the seat if his mass is 18 kilograms? All right, so let's look at what's going on over here in terms of a free body diagram. So what I'll do is uh, let's create, well, I'll create a different, I'll create a set of axes here. So now the child has a certain weight to, to him, right? I think it's a he in the problem. So um, let's dot this little point right in the middle. That's the child's center of mass. Now that child has a certain weight, right? So that would be pointing straight down. Okay. Now, not only does that child have a weight, but there is also a centripetal force, right, that is produced by the swing uh, because it has a centripetal acceleration. It's a circular path, and it has a velocity, right, and, there, and if it's circular, it has a radius. So therefore, it produces a net centripetal force. Remember, centripetal forces are net uh, forces here. So what that means is that uh, at the low point here, not only does the swing have to overcome, right, the weight of the child, but it also then has to keep the child in the circular path. So there must be a force pointing straight upwards, okay? That must not only counteract the weight, but must also include the centripetal force. So I'm gonna call this vector just F sub N, okay? This is just F sub N for like a normal force. And this is, this is the normal force that the seat is exerting on the child, okay? And if we can find that, then we can find the force that the child exerts on the seat, right? by Newton's third law. So in my diagram here, let's just point this vector on up, and this will be the normal force. Now the sums of these two forces is going to be the centripetal force, just so you know. So I'm gonna look, since this is a pure Y problem, I'm gonna to look to do this now. Let me just label this A, I realized I didn't do that. Let me label this part B. So I'm gonna do a pure sum of the force in the Y direction is equal to MAY. Right? It's basically the same thing or very similar to that formula. It's just that um, I'm, going, I'm breaking up the centripetal force. Remember, the centripetal force is the sum already of the forces in this picture. So this should be F, F sub n for the normal force minus the weight should equal then the mass of the child multiplied by the um, acceleration right, that the child is experiencing. So this simply becomes right F sub n is equal to and mass times acceleration minus the weight. All we now need to do is just plug in, right? So the normal force here is gonna be the mass of the child. They said it was 18 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration, which is the centripetal acceleration. And oops, I made a mistake here, right? I'm just looking back, that has to be plus. Silly goose, you gotta sound like I'm talking to my son now, right? I got all these, got all these words I haven't used since I was like seven years old. Um, that's now fresh in my vocabulary. So in any, in, in any case, I'm such a silly goose here. Um, I have to add the weight, all right? Uh, so it should be adding the weight. So her weight is calculated, remember, mg. So therefore, it is now uh, 18, right? That's her mass. And then times gravity of 9.8080. Okay, great. So we have the normal force here. 
just plug it into the calculator. So it's 18 times 40.5 plus 18 times 9.8. And what do we get? We get 905, right? 905 newtons. Okay, that will be the force that the, um, basically this is the force, right, that the seat is exerting on the child. Okay, and therefore, right, because, I mean, look at the way that the thing is pointing. And therefore, what is the magnitude of the force that the child exerts on the seat? Well, if this is positive, right, then technically the answer here should be negative if we're trying to find the force that the child exerts on the seat. So, so I'll say the force that the child exerts then on the seat, well, that C looks like centripetal, right? So let me do CH, okay? is gonna equal negative not, um, 905 newtons, just so, we're, just so we're clear, all right? And that turned into a triangle somehow. All right, so now, great, letter C. I'm getting tired of black, let's change the color. All right, so it says, what is unreasonable, oh, what's unreasonable about these results? Um, uh, so what I'll do is, in, in order to illustrate this, I will do a ratio, okay? So we got 905 newtons, right, that the child is exerting on the seat or that the seat is exerting on the child. And now let's take that, you know, force and divide it by the man, uh, excuse me, the weight of the child. So the weight is 18 times 9.8. And let's see what type of ratio we get here. We get 905 divided by... 18 times 9.8. Well, don't forget the parentheses. Don't make a silly mistake like I just did. 18 times 9, 9.8, close parentheses, 5.13. Okay, so 5.13. All right, now this, uh, if you guys did the prior problem with me, number 21, you'll realize that, um, you know, on this amusement park ride, where essentially we, we, I made the assumption without air resistance that the ship, you know, was in free fall for, what was it, 28 meters in height? Uh, that produced a weight of, of five times the, uh, the individual's weight. So this sounds quite excessive, right? I mean, for a mother to be pushing her child on a swing in the backyard, unless she's pushing him in the, in the Viking ship that we did in the prior problem, I don't think this is quite reasonable. Uh, what would be some premises that are unreasonable? I don't know. It's probably not traveling at nine meters per second here. That's a little. That's a little nuts. Or the radius here is much bigger, all right, than um, than it than it was uh, recorded at. Again, anything to make this value smaller. So what that means is either reduce the numerator or increase the denominator. So that has to be one of those things. Is what's unreasonable here? All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe and I will see you soon. Take care.